I'm still confused about this Bane pick for Hanskin. I'm not a Bane believer. He didn't get touched in the patch. And there wasn't anything big though, like like Aether Lens didn't get touched, like Glimmer didn't get touched, these support items that Bane Prepare likes to build. I don't know, very weird for me, but we'll see what can be done on this hero. I do believe in this Rest Farmers lineup still. Um, whether or not Liquid is going to outclass them, I think this will be the game to decide it. I think there's a lot of uh, really good stuff in the draft for Rest Farmers, like we kind of talked about. The Gyro isn't too yeah. bad. Uh, oh, it's it's going to so kind of get dogged in the lane. And that might just be something you have to deal with and put pressure on all the other lanes. Like mid will be a good focal point for rest farmers. Dealing with Nisha has been pretty much the go-to for a lot of teams since Liquid has been, you know, in this roster form. It's pretty much been how can we deal with Nisha? Yeah, absolutely. And Nisha on a hero that absolutely needs to be dealt with this game. But I love the Liquid strategy coming into this because it feels like they've just provided Rest Farmers with three focal points that all have to be dealt with. There isn't a single hero you can ignore in these fights uh, at risk of them either impacting you trying to pick off another hero. Like, let's say we already sort of pink the situation out for Rest Farmers. You go in with Xantic, you grab any one of the three calls. There's infest, there's stuns, there's DP ripping you to shreds. You try and Fiend's Grip, a silence over your head. Right, it, it just feels like it doesn't line up nicely. Just has to come down to this early game. Five members of Rest Farmers are grouping up around this rune, so should just be a two for two though. Nothing too crazy. And uh, I look, I've been liking this Bane. I'll be honest. I know it's a bit out of fashion, okay. color me old school, but I think uh, a lot of these position five players who need a stable, reliable hero, not only in the lane but be able to have sort of impact in the fights. This Fiend's grip is going to be a big problem for Liquid early on. I might have to disagree with you on that one. They've got the Death Prophet Silence, they've got the Stun from Enigma, Tiny, the Lesh one, I'm not going to count that one because it takes a few seconds. But they do have instant ways of cancelling this Fiend script where it's not going to be as easy as a 1-2-3. You know, yeah, but it's kind of a similar situation where the, the point I'm trying to make is that Rest Farmers, they have quite a few things they need to cancel, right? If if yeah. Pablo decides to steal something pretty significant, like either a stun or some spirit siphons coming out, they need to deal with him. He's suddenly trucking out a lot of damage. Hanskin, he's already ripping into 33 in the lane, and we, as much as we talk about this DP having a good time, she needs spirit siphon levels, and she's not there yet. I mean, the big story for me is that if they commit one or two stuns onto Hanskin just to stop that Fiend's grip, suddenly that means the split's gonna come out. Suddenly, and Xantic's yeah. not too interrupted when he's pulverizing, right? So... In the same vein, it feels like Rest Farmers, they have a couple of focal points that need to be dealt with, and it's all going to come down to the Steam Fire execution. Last game didn't really look the best for Rest Farmers, felt like they were a bit disconnected from each other in terms of what they wanted to do. But uh, Boxy already dragging the creeps over to 33, so he's able to farm safely. Yeah, get that level 2 where it's super important for Death Prophet. I think the level 3, arguably more important, that second point in the Spirit Siphon, is phenomenal. But uh, that's going to be... Like, this is how you deal with Death Prophet in lane. Hanskin's doing a really good job. Focus her down on level 1, get her low, make things awkward for her, make her not happy in lane. So all of a sudden, level 3, level 4 starts rolling around when Death Prophet starts taking over. Yeah. Boxy, unfortunately, has to sacrifice his courier just to complete that minute 2 block, but it's all worth it as long as 33 keeps on farming. Not the best in terms of the CS, but has a wave coming into her now. And... Should be able to pick up most of these. And uh, it's th those later levels where things will start to get a bit hairy. So Shad, he's going to try and milk this as much as possible early on. Uh, he absolutely is, right? 14-3 to 3 right now on the gyro. He is swimming. Is it? I think he's flying, Sneeze. I'm not... I'm not... He's say swimming in the air. Much of a swimmer. If you, okay. I mean, you can't I'm see him because he's very tiny. That. But but sure. he's he's while he's piloting the the aircraft, he's like waddling his arms in there as well. Hanskin, not a lot of mana to work with. Gets tossed back onto thirty three. The spirit siphon coming out as well. I'm gonna try and chase down this Bane, who's pretty tanky level one, but clearly not tanky I enough. Do. First blood again for this duo in the off lane. Liquid squaring up big time. Not too scared about the bully potential from this Bane. It will punch him down. And that's kind of the weird part about this Jaro Bane lane. I don't know how much it actually does. Harass-wise, it's cool. Sustain-wise, it's nice. I think Hanskin can make space for Shad. But the kill potential on Liquid is still incredibly high. Yeah, I can just keep doing that over and over, right? As soon as... Even if the Gyro steps out of line, you get chased down. All you 
really have to break that up is a nightmare level that it doesn't seem like Henskin had the mana for in that situation, so I mean, you can't let that happen a few more times. If not, that's where 33 bosses up, hits that level 6, kills off your tower, things start going hairy. How about these other lanes? Let's have a little gander, a little look-see. Seems like Nisha doing just fine. 21 to 10, a whole truck ton of denies against a Xante. Whoa, this Primal Beast, he, he's 10 CS. Yikes, and weird because like damage-wise, Atlantic has the higher right click as well as the quelling blade, so they're. I guess it's it is Nisha on the lash, right? It's a very yeah, hard hero to stand on. against. So I I do understand the struggle. I understand not wanting to get up and last hitting, right? It's super annoying. The chain lightning is a lot of damage, but still, yeah. I I didn't think Atlantic would be suffering this much. Yeah, I guess the story of Primal Beast is regardless of whether you're able to get a lot of CS in the lane, it, not that it's unimportant, but you get a lot of your value from these early rotations. So we'll have to yeah. keep an eye out for some level 6, you know, TPs into lane, maybe surprise 33 or Boxy when they're caught off guard. It's certainly a good duo to set that up between Shad and Hanskin. Nightmare as well as Homing Missile, is going to buy them a lot What's of time. This? Bot side, uh, looks like the Brewmasters doing just fine as well, not suffering just yet to Mickey. Eh? But I guess that's the problem with the Life Stealer, where he doesn't really present major kill threat on you. Speaking of kill threat, uh oh, Nisha in this mid lane. Oh, narrowly able to bottle up through that last auto attack. Pablo doesn't continue the chase, and they're not going to be able to finish off that kill. 30 HP, man. Wow. By the hairs of his chinny chin chin, Nisha will have to do the walk back to base. Yeah. Yikes. I mean, it's, that's There's not a lot of hairs on Zantic. his chin on Lash. Uh, if you, you mean, look dude? at the beard, it's kind of... It's it's a very it's weak beard. Tower. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's nothing like your yeah, yeah. Crash. Oh, you're, 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 you're superior in that regard. All right, yeah, if you it. had to I'm live by the hairs Lesh. on your chin, you would live for a very long time. <laughs> be very old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, generally clean shaven in the photos that we've seen of him and that's kind of how he survived that situation as well. And Xenia, unfortunately, a little bit of trouble now. He's gonna get slapped down the power of the Brewmaster, but instant trade back, the Eidolons just absolutely taking revenge there. And I, you know, it's a good kill onto Insania. they be getting some good EXP, but in a 1v1 situation, or 1v1 plus Eidolon army situation, Zibi doesn't win that, so he's just gonna have to resort to it. Yeah, I might have. I, I wasn't gonna bother, we got a timeout anyway. Yeah, fair. Coming in onto Atlantic now, 6 minute rune. That Malaface, it's not enough to stop him from onslaughting away, yeah, but it's it? enough damage! Insania! Yeah. The random death into 6 minute rotation just works out perfectly. And this tower gets denied, but still, objective success for Nisha here. With now a shield rune for Nisha, I don't think there's anything stopping this last from going top. You take Tower. Well, maybe with 33 and Boxy dead, you might have to wait a little bit. <laughs> oh, Shad, again, with the emphasis on the Rocket Barrage levels, they paid off big time and nets yes. him two kills. Great stuff from this Gyrocopter. The only way you can deal with Death Prophet when she gets points into Spirit Siphon is making sure that you have more damage than her. Right, more damage that she can heal up and Rocket Barrage, well, that's, uh, that's a lot of damage, right? I think people have known that for quite a long time, but the priority the Rocket Barrage would make this build really cool. Whoa, whoa, Pablo. Coming in for some sneaky business. The toss away and the Avalanche can't come through in time. But Mickey, on the flip side, able to get a little thievery done of his own. So ends up being an even trade. I mean, Boxy just spam ping like, hey, come on, let's get this Rubik, man. There's no way he gets out of this card free. Well, on the flip side, and Zantix around, runs into Insania. This is a very awkward attempted gank onto Mickey, especially with Nisha around. Not really sure what rest farmers were angling for there, especially if Zibe with like no mana. Pablo's just gonna go down after that extended chase in the top side. Pablo was there for like 30 se 40 seconds even. That was yeah, kind right. of crazy. I'm surprised he lived that long. 33 had no intention of coming back. <laughs> he was like, okay. Like, yeah. boss, he's like, honey, I've set up a support kill for you. And think he's like, yeah, yeah. Yes, dear. Okay. Yeah, right. It's almost a reluctance to get that kill. Yeah. It feels like 4 to 3 on the board now. It's an 8 minute rune spawns. Unfortunately, it's going to be Nisha again who gets the lucky grab on that one. The 50 50 in his favor. That's not going to stop Rest Farmers from smoking on though, but I think it actually got spotted out. 
33. There are TPs available and Boxy waiting in the wings. They might just refocus onto him or just continue invading the triangle instead. The scan connects perfectly, so Liquid are completely aware that this is coming and adjust the map state accordingly. Good stuff from Liquid, good read, and they were actually willing to fight that, that right? Nisha was coming power. over, 33 and Boxy chilling in the triangle. They were ready, they were geared up for this fight. It's an interesting ward as well, placed in the river. Take a look at the one to the right of Nisha. It's not really a frequent location, but that's going to give them the advanced focus that Pablo is still hanging around. And my friend, you are not allowed to be there. Gets killed off. Yeah, no, no right as a position for it to be that deep. I mean, I guess you're making space? Nah, he has no, he has <laughs> the, to be fair, he has no clue that there's vision there, right? Because in his yeah. mind, oh, I've dewatered the cliff and we have a sentry in the mid lane. There's no way they put a random ward right next to the tree outside of the triangle. And that's exactly what they could do though. Very interesting ward location. We might see this more and more in the uh, sort of rest of the qualifiers. Mike, I might steal that one in my pubs. It's a really cool ward placement. Yeah. It's uh, still spots out rotations, doesn't really lose much leverage on the runes, yeah. and in that particular case, it helps him avoid the smoke gang. Sibe, <laughs> trying to get his way towards level 6 for that insurance policy, but Mickey laying into him big time. That's a big problem with the Lifestealer. The top of the net worth now is still shared. This Gyro's done a great job for himself post those, du those double kills. Still able to continue maxing out his net worth. I like this move from Zibe getting the Talisman of Evasion first. There's no point saving up for that Sacred Relic. It's way too much dead net worth on the hero. Uh, you're dealing oh, with true, Lifestealer, yeah. right? So getting the Talisman, very value. Let's you stay this in lane against the Lifestealer, uh, which a lot of heroes can't claim. Yeah, uh, he's still sitting there. He's lost his tower, but he is still sitting there yeah. and sapping as much as he can. And I mean, later down the line as well, I think this Gyro and Lifestealer matchup never really pans out too, too well for the Gyro. You're more or less hoping that the rest of your team can deal with the Lifestealer while you kill everyone on your opponent's side. But, you know, there is an angle if the Gyro goes for something like a Butterfly later down the line. Lifestealers really hate having to build MKB, but maybe this is the game that he's forced into it. Like dealing with a Brewmaster and that potential Butterfly on Gyro, if any game is going to be it, it's going to be this one. That up onto Nisha now. Handskin in the area as well, ready for a beam script. Nisha trying to juke, but still gonna get pulverized. They will be able to finish him off. More than enough damage. And now with the beam script onto the life stealer as well. The full side of rest farmers, they just converge and get two high value kills. Liquid let their guard down a little bit. Weren't expecting that rotation. And it's Xantic, he might set up for another one. Don't you know, Primal Beast loves throwing rocks. This travels all over Boxy now. But the rest of the gang, it's only a matter of time before Boxy takes a tumble. Three big kills. And looks like Rest Farmers, they'll be able to convert this into a tier 1 as well. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, Nisha's up in 5 seconds. Lifestealer's up in 5 seconds. So maybe there's a world where they defend this. But with the Catapult, these three heroes, they think there's four. Shouldn't be too much of a defense. It should just be a fortification, chill out. Yeah, I mean, no reason to continue running into here. It's not like yeah. the split was used, right? Sibe still has that in pocket, so... Very scary affair. And I think uh, somewhere off the map, we didn't really see it on the camera, but I assume that 33 just used the EXO to either try and pressure somebody or push down the tower or something like that. So that's not available. And that's kind of one of your major team fight uh, tools that you want to chuck into the mix in this early stage. It's very much rest farmers who have that uh, hand on the driving wheel right now. They can continue on the back of this primal beast and keep making space. He's queuing up that blade mail, which I think is pretty good this game, especially into all yeah. this uncontrollable damage. Absolutely. I think the item has definitely fallen out of favor from, you know, the Blade Mill Heart era, but it's still really good this game. Keeping it going here, a lot of magic damage. And now Boxy here to help his mid laner out. Stun. He's holding Nisha in place, so the chase can't continue, and this is kind of one of the only issues that we see from the Team Liquid lineup, right? They are catch potential is very limited to Boxy and his blink, and if Insania decides it's good enough for him to jump in. Other than that, the course, they just have to rely on running at you, which means that rest farmers can do the thing where they walk their little legs and run away. Ah, the old walk away strategy. The, I've yeah, heard the of old, that one, the old, you know, very high level. Right, that's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't be a pro Dota player if you don't know the walk away from a situation strategy, which uh, rest farmers employ to perfection. They're great stuff. That's probably going to be the name of the game for this entire game, right? It's just uh, 
how well and how fast Rest Farmers can kite and run away from not just this Life Shaler, but Death Prophet and Lesh as well. Now, that's yeah. where the Tiny is going to come in handy, in my opinion, right? That's going to be where Boxy, once he gets that Blink Dagger, is going to be a force to be reckoned with around the map. Because all of a sudden, instead of just walking at you, you have the toss back. Yeah. Another high-level strategy here, using Smoke <laughs> to Farm. You've never seen this before. But, yeah, I mean, of course, Lesh... I just mop that up. He's gone for the Yules first, and we've largely seen a bit of a split up in terms of Lash itemizations, right? Either you go for a bit more greedy, uh, focus on yourself, and you get that Bloodstone first, relying on your uh, other allies for the catch and control. But this particular game, like we mentioned, it's just boxy, so he tries to show up that department by grabbing himself a Yules and perhaps being able to interrupt some of the Fiend's grips, or, yep. you know, maybe stop that Xantic in place, hold Shad up into the sky, you know, it's just handy all around. I'm pretty sure Nisha has gotten every single action room this game. Yeah, that yeah. is uh, Exantic hasn't gotten a single one. Yeah, his bottle's been empty for a while now. He could really use a drink. Yeah, someone uh, get him to Birmingham and set him up at the Weather Spoons. You know, he needs a little, he needs a little tap of beer or something like that. But uh, for now, Rest Farmers, they've gotten quite a bit of leverage out of these early game rotations from the Primal Beast. My question is. Is it enough, right? He just has that blade mail as well as the first component of his BKB. Feels like the next stage for them will be getting towards the BKBs again. The Gyrocopter a lot closer to that Aghanim Scepter than he was last game. Shad, he's done very, very well for himself. I like this rotation from Liquid. I think they're hearing you sneeze. They recognize that, hey, you know, this Gyro is going to slowly start becoming a problem for us if we don't do something against him, so... Walk into the strip, but it does get scouted out by a ward. Hanskin's gonna make his way up here now. And yeah. Liquid, they're gonna maybe try to force something here, but look at Rest Farmers. They're drawing the lines, making the moves up. Yeah, and, and I think the key thing for me is that Boxy, he hasn't really gotten involved in quite as much action as he would have wanted, right? 0, 2, and 3. That's not really his fault. He just doesn't really have the opportunities, but that slowed down the Blink Dagger big time. I mean, he's not even close to it. And yeah. they're not gonna have that part of their parcel for what feels like another five to seven minutes yeah, unless things start ramping up very quickly for liquid it's going to be a very slow blink dagger boxy does not farm that fast sure you can clear waves but it uses like your entire mana pool then you got to call it a clarity and you're wasting blink dagger money it uh it's yeah, just also, a feels honestly, bad which waves are you clearing when you have a less dp lifestealer lineup <laughs> exactly like, <this> <laughs> These guys are mopping up everything. It's just too much gold yeah. on the map. And I mean, hell, even Insania's farming. So unfortunately, Boxy has to take a bit of a back foot. I do have to wonder whether this is giving Rest Farmers too much valuable time though, right? They're able to scale up on the calls they need to. And Zantic, despite not really having a farming focus early on, is now building his way towards those items after clearing Creep Wave, after Creep Wave, stack after stack. And you still haven't really shaken Rest Farmers from their own game plan there. Maybe they're confident in the late game and the matchup that they have, especially with the Black Hole and the Lifestealer into Gyro Sitch, but... Seems like Rest Farmers are just fine too. Yeah, both these teams are chilling. I think it does favor Liquid just a little bit. Right, I, I, I do think the Rest Farmers, they don't have a damage issue this game. They don't have a tank ability issue, but... Just because of the way that, you know, they were fighting last game, it... I am still favoring the way the Liquid are playing as a team, you know? Yeah. I mean, they are literally not sweating at all. They've just kind of turned on the back. They, they won one game, and they're like, okay, you know, onus is on you to push this to a three. We're not too pressed. Handskin. Again, trying to set up some advanced vision, maybe for Xantic to work, but Fusha TPing in. Nice rules to stop that onslaught from coming forward, and now 33 in the picture as well. All down. Shad wants to fight, but Xantic already no more HP to work with. My lord, he disappears. That Exo committed by 33. I don't think it's a fight that Rest Farmers can afford to take anymore, but actually got to commit split now onto Sibe, but they've already lost the Bane as well. He's not been able to use the grip, and now these broodings just have to turn tail and run. A bit of a strange run from Rest Farmers here. Not really sure what they were trying to accomplish. And met with the full defense of Liquid, who are completely ready to fight them back. I don't know what Rest Farmers are doing there fighting under a tier 1 tower. I mean, I guess they have vision, so they think they have the advantage, but... Uh, I don't know, you're running into high ground against Black Hole, Tiny, Lash, Death Prophet. These small, isolated areas are... Yeah, also... 
yeah, I mean, and they're not even done yet. You already you split. Your primal beast is nowhere nearby. Sibi will just die. Maybe Shad's feeling comfortable with his Aghanims, but he doesn't have anything else. You sleep up on Tunisia now to set up on the Lash, but another crazy Yules. You've managed to punch down Mickey though. Hanskin able to get that kill on the Lifestealer, and now Liquids are the one who have to run. And despite no ultimate, well, they do have a few ultimates on Rest Farmer still. Uh, As Antic will always pretty much have pulverize up. Super low cooldown. Uh, is going towards that BKB, which is going to be incredibly important, like we talked about. But the physical damage from Liquid are still there. Right? Sure, yeah. you're not going to get kited, you're not going to get Yule stunned anymore, and that's going to be big for the Primal. But still, you have to be careful of the physical damage coming out. Yeah. In that particular situation, Mickey uh, getting caught out by that Fiend's grip. Hanskin, even though he saw that the life stealer was so low, he just decides to chuck that out to prevent him from getting away scot-free. And all these return kills are very important. It's just a less than 1k gold lead right now. The game's still very much dead even. And my god, dude, the gyro is just continuing to scale, right? And later down the line, Lash and Life Stealer, apart from maybe a Shivas or Armlet, they aren't really heroes that get a lot of armor items. You're going to be relying on maybe Insania to buy some auras or greaves and stuff like that to really show that department out. Gyro could become a really big problem, especially if he finishes that BKB Daedalus. Mm, I think Gyro's already kind of become a problem, right? He's top of the net worth, and sure, he's not, you know, the force to be reckoned with 1v5 kind of hero right now, but he's certainly going to get there if things keep going the way of breast farming like this. Ah, Hanskin. This guy has no fear warding deep, and more than not, he pays the price for it, but it doesn't seem to concern him in the slightest. Just come out here, put down a sentry, but it's spotted by a nice lane ward. Just how happened to be that liquid was in the very same area. Unfortunately, he pays the price for it. Well, it seems like it's Antic angling for a bit of a catch, trying to contest for this room, but Nisha just being able to grab that one. Yeah, nothing to be found. Another so, room. <laughs> yeah. As Zantic had filled up his bottle, like, I mean, he's died. So obviously the bottle has been filled, but literally every time I click on this hero, it's an empty bottle. And he's just staring at Nisha's full bottle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just that though. No action rune. None of those juicy action rune. He got on that tier three bounty rune shit. You know, like he's like he's like so sad. The water is like the water in that bottle is not even tasting quite as juicy. It's just like, it's man, like a Jasani water, you know. No flavor. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like uh, soda water, but like they haven't even really carbonated it well. And you're just like, man, yeah. why? You? Might as well just serve me drain water. This is awful. Uh, I mean, nothing wrong with drain water, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, for yeah. drinking, a lot of things wrong with drain water, but... Uh, yes, yes. You know, for what it is, you know, no disrespect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> water is water, dude, right at the end okay. of the day. Yeah, and uh, uh Nisha, I don't think you... Actually, no, it's he's fine. fine. He has blood. Yeah, yeah, he's fine, bloodstone, eh? Nice, the DD rune and the bloodstone, that was enough. Very cool. Yeah, Liquid. and also the vampire fangs, he's stealing that life, baby. True. They're very, like, at a very good rate as well. I think the Lesh vampire fangs is not necessarily overlooked, but I think underutilized sometimes. Yeah, I mean, a lot of good uh, tier 2 neutral items for them to get. Uh, two two sure. Pilo stones working overtime for the rest farmer support, so these guys are gonna... These guys are gonna get a crazy second item timing at the 30 minute mark. <laughs> I don't know. The Philosopher's Stone will finally pay off. Radiant yeah, Hens can still poor shit, enemy. but understandable, right? He's playing sort of yeah. position 6 Bane mode. I, yeah, I, I mean, do have to wonder, I mean, fine, none right? of these teams are really that good at taking Roach, apart from Liquid, and they don't seem to be in a rush at all. I guess they really, it really comes back down to them thinking they have a superior late game. I don't know whether I disagree, but I also feel like they're going to be met with Rest Farmers with a full-powered Gyro a lot earlier than they expect. Radiant are scanning for enemies. Well, Sneeze, you kind of hit the nail on the head earlier. Boxy has just finished his Blink Dagger 22 minutes in. Maybe mm -hmm. now Liquid want to go Roche. They did scan out Pablo in uh, the area, I'm pretty sure. Fair. Yeah, that's probably what they were waiting for. I think it's just such a natural timing that it felt like it, it already happened. Oh, Pablo. Dude, this Rubik, he's tucked behind the pit. I don't think they know he's there, yeah. He has a Korean just flying out to him now. The Roche is already being taken out. I think, I fear Rest Farmers might be a bit too late. This is taking not as much time as maybe they're expecting. Pablo's still tucked into this corner, but I mean, 
think he's gonna be time for any sort of sneaky shenanigans. Yeah, Aegis already grabbed. Straight up infest. They're ready for a fight. Adzenting will reveal himself, but immediately Malefist start. They'll split up onto the high ground, but Adzenting, he's already very low, has to commit the BKB, and it's chaos now. The ghost still running from 33, not under any threat at all. They're trying to pulverize out the Insania. They should be able to finish off the Enigma, but it comes at the cost of the mid laner. All these primal split rulings are already going down, and everyone on Liquid is still looking healthy. You need to run away on the shed, popping that BKB. Not the reveal that you want, not the problem that we thought he would be. Straight up onto the high ground, you throw him up into the sky, but that's not what you want. But Henskin had just gripped him. Complete miscommunication. Res Farmers, they don't look like they're on the same page, and Liquid slammed the book shut on them in this Roche fight. They might have lost that first life on the Aegis, but it doesn't even matter. Full team wipe. And Liquid, they are in control now. Man, those BKBs just didn't feel like they did anything. And those are the big timers that we were talking about. Insania has not used a single black hole. He was just fodder that fight. But the rest of Liquid, right, this is kind of what we talked about. The priorities. Enigma, big priority. Flesh, Death Prophet, Lifesaver, all of the priorities. Rest Farmers, they don't know who to prioritize during these fights. It was a very scattered engagement for them. Yeah, it was so weird because we saw that split popped on the high ground. I'm like, oh, all these primal split rules, he's gonna run it and cause chaos. Okay, you toss up a 33 that has already popped EXO and Spirit Siphon on like one or two of your Brulings. Nisha's still doing massive AoE damage. Shad just can't get into the right position to do damage. And a lot of it just comes back down to Xantic coming from a different Excellent. angle from the team, right? He was trying to get the jump on them, but Insania beats him to the punch, Maleficus, and because of that pipe that he has, he just takes a bit too long to die. By the time he's dealt with, Xantic's gone as well. And that's so much of your teamfight pressure, like we mentioned, so much of your control. The rest of the side of Rest Farmers, they just can't find an opportunity. Well, now all of a sudden, if you're Rest Farmers, you're like, oh man, we've, you know, we were, we thought we were strong. We had these two BKBs and, you know, maybe now you're kind of starting to doubt, you know, doubt your capabilities taking fights until you get a few more items. Yeah, we talked about the damage that Shag could be doing, but he wasn't even in auto-attacking range, it felt like, that fight. Dyer's top tower just gonna have to find a way to insert him in connect him on the targets that you need him because it really it, we're talking about the damage he's the only person who can supply that this game. Top tower yeah. is gone. i mean primal beast is fine as a damage dealer as well he's gonna go for this ags as well but it uh Radiant, comes out a little differently enemies. when there's a pipe of insight on the enemy team doesn't feel as good yeah. Also comes out a little differently when you're taking immense aoe damage on <laughs> yeah. three different calls right you have death oh, prophet no. a pulse nova Oh, Hanskin just gets picked off for free there. How many times have we seen this happen? This Bane pick just hasn't really been working out for them. He can't get into the position to get these Fiend Scripts off. Even in that last fight, it was so weird because Sibe used the Storm Panda Cyclone to toss up the DP yeah. just as she was being Fiend Scripted. That was painful to watch. And now, Liquid, no age is no problem. They're still continuing to steam forward on these Tier 2 Towers. You know, it could just be, you know, growing pains of a new team, like we've already kind of talked about when we started the series. Rest Farmers, they're a new-ish stack, right? These players have been around before, but they're still learning to play with each other. So, miscommunications, they happen. It's part of Dota. Oh, Black Hole, on the top side, they've caught out the Primal Beast, and this is just an elimination. Rest Farmers, they need to get something done, but with all their Primal Beasts, what can they really do? There's instant there. Liquid. They don't hesitate for a moment. And I mean, if he can say there, his trigger finger got a little itchy. He's just like, man, I haven't used Black Hole in 20 minutes. I thought just pop it out, no problem. So pop now onto the high ground. Nice Crypt Swarm, good discipline there from 33 to prevent that from being stolen by Pablo, but still a good tool for the Ruby to use to help with the wave clear. Yeah, just one fate roll, one just clear it, yeah. Crypt Swarm. I'm gonna stop them from continuing to walk up forward though. They know that without Primal Beast, this fight is borderline impossible. He's coming back up in 10 seconds though, and uh, that just basically means that he's not gonna buy back. So I'm gonna try and milk the most out of the, du the duration left as he can. Nice discipline from Liquid, right? They understand Primal's up, they got what they came for. They got the tier 3 tower, they don't have Aegis. No reason to overextend. Play this area, wait for Rest Farmers to come back, come out, and then take another fight. Kill off its Antic again, ideally, and yeah. look to start closing out these racks in this game. 
I mean, you're just waiting around because if if rest in uh, rest farmers they have any lapse of discipline at all, they show one hero easy toss back from Boxy, no black hole, no problem. You go back straight to high ground, get that advantage, right? So for now, still poking and prodding away though. SNY complete means that Mickey ain't scared of a thing. Starting pressure now on this tier three with full squad of rest farmers. What kind of fight can they surmise? Nice little four star bang, but it works against Pablo. The Lesh is in the middle doing so much damage. And the Jaro will try and set his ground and turn it all around. Nisha is starting to drop a little low now, but still has the Bloodstone, keeping him pepped up. They kill off the Life Stealer. Good set of moves there. I believe that must have been Hanskin with the Fiend's Grip. Uh, starting to back inside a Liquid. Now might be the time to retreat, Sibe. Nothing else to offer. Uh oh. Nisha now in some trouble, but a huge avalanche from Bouncy just claws them all out. They lose the ledge though, and now 33, he's all alone. He finally finishes off the support, and Shad able to escape as well. But Bouncy, he's on his last legs, just has to try and run away. Insania doesn't have a black hole to contribute for a bit more, but all the rocks being thrown into his head. And Xantic has to try and onslaught and TP away. They have vision, but no way of stopping him. It's good defense, all things considered, from Rest Farmers. They beat back the side of Liquid and get some very valuable kills. It still turns out, despite being 10k or 7, 5k up now, uh, 6k even, uh, going high ground is very hard. Uh, this patch, for uh, quite a while, going high ground has been difficult. Still, Liquid are in the driver's seat, but a good bounce back from Rest Farmers, right? Yeah, the win probability is it's not looking good. But that yeah. 6%, Rest Farmers are holding on to it. Yeah, and I mean, they're gonna have to rely on more opportunities like that, right? Liquid, they were very well aware that number one, they didn't have Aegis, they didn't have Exo in that situation, at least the early parts of that fight, and they didn't have Black Hole. They still decided to make that commitment. Even though we were praising them for the good discipline there, it felt like they imagined they were a lot stronger than they actually were, not really respecting the Bane Fiend's grip from the high ground, and that ends up clocking out Mickey for a second time. He's gonna be a lot more aware of that, that's for sure. Maybe calling for a Lotus Orb, or at least maybe Bossy to come play interference on that. All this while, Shad still ramping up. Enchanted Quiver Daedalus looking at the Satanic now. He felt very low that fight, was still able to survive. So, a lot of good EXP going his way. And Xantic just got a, an action rune. Let's go. Let's go! He's <laughs> done it. This is... The, the tide of the game has turned, ladies and gents. Yeah, Everybody, yeah. this is... It starts Rest Farmers here. coming back. It's crazy. Shield rune is going to make him uh, so tanky. That they will still be able to kill him, it's just gonna take a little while longer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they can, they can still kill off this Primal Beast for sure, especially with Black Hole up, so... You know, you're not as safe as you'd like to think with that shield rune at Xantic. I think he recognizes that, right? No more pushing that mid lane. Back to the triangle you go. Then he's actually gone for Aether Lens, so trying to increase his own sort of catch range with that Black Hole. Uh-oh, Sebe set up on here in this top side. We'll just have to try and Primal Split. But the stun, it's perfect. The connection. And no three of you, just one of you falling to the ground, I think. 60 seconds without your Brewmaster. And now, right back to it. Liquid, they didn't have to commit a single thing other than invest for it. And yeah, things are troublesome now. Rest Farmers, I don't think you can defend without your Primal Split. But that means, like, minimum what? One more lane, two more lanes of racks? Yeah, it's definitely two lanes of racks. They could try on rest farmers, and it looks like they might try to mount some sort of defense here, but I, I don't think they can do it. They already have a Lotus, they want to go on to hand skin, focus down this bane, but the charge through connects on the fall, that's pretty huge from Atlantic. Pop the BKB and starting to become a problem. Shad, he's laying in with the damage and Liquid, they have to retreat. Nobody's really dying though on the side of Liquid, as they're able to just fully extract, take down the racks. No reason to keep it going, just back up now. And despite what seemed like a pretty decent initiation, Rest Farmers hold, I guess, but they still lose the objective and they don't get any kills. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't call that a hold. You, uh, you don't yeah. lose the game right then and there, but it is slowly being siphoned away from you. Yeah. Uh, any win probability checkers didn't go any further down? 2% now. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Nah, it's rough. It yeah. seems like, uh... Mr. Gaben also believes that later and later we go, this black hole is going to be a problem. And realistically, we've only seen it used on the final beast, and it's still good enough for them at this point. So, can imagine yeah. if Insania lands it on one of the two more heroes, it's going to be curtains. You know, it's funny, we said, you know, the Bane hasn't really been hitting for us, despite him getting two kills on the Lifestealer. Pretty yeah. much single-handedly with that Fiend's Grip. <laughs> That's what I meant, Enigma, he's only gotten one black hole, so... A little funny. Yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, that's I, uh, I, that's I exactly what they picked the, the bane for, right? With head skin, yeah. like it's literally they saw the life stealer first pick. They're like, need. We're gonna get fiends grid. We can't deal with it, but it's clearly not enough. It fell apart in the lane, and then once again, gonna try and get that boss on the roach. This has happened before. We saw what happened. They I'm tried to the full commit, blue. but they just didn't have the damage. Yeah. Starting to smell a little bit similar, the wave will crash in and they don't see any defending member of Rest Farmers. They know this Roche is happening. The question is, do Liquid come in and contest? This could be the trap that Rest Farmers are trying to set them up for. Already preemptively splitting, trying to find the target and they are actually able to get the Aegis but they're starting to lose members. Handskin just easily goes down, can buy back into the fight if he chooses to. But Chad has to stand his ground and try and fight. Starting a lane with the damage, Insania still has that black hole waiting on the sidelines and Zandrick trying his best to break up the situation but he's gonna get broken apart instead and still they find Chad he might have two lives but no more allies standing around you Sibe these little brulings are doing nothing for you just kiten around and Chad he's just gonna go down Sibe he can't contribute anything and don't even black hole right on his head sure you want me to use it that bad I got you another five man team wide at the Roche pit this time rest farmers are able to get the ages but it doesn't even matter you know, that might be enough for them to get one more fight in, but it, I don't know if rest farmers have it in them. I'm assuming that win probability is back down to 1% now, because I really don't see a way back in for rest farmers unless they get some crazy fiend script. Mickey, he's going to end the game all by his lonesome. There it goes. Yeah, I mean, he knows they're in a really, really bad spot. And even if you buy back on everybody, you don't have split. What yeah. you gotta do, Liquid. Look to be clocking Rest Farmers down to the lower bracket very early on and Rest Farmers, they might not have called it just yet. Maybe one final fight is what they'll try and go for. They don't have a glyph though and their Ancient is just dying. I mean, you have Vibe on the Brew but again, okay. I mean, Rest Farmers, <laughs> not sure what that was about. But I think that sums up the series very well, right? It feels like yeah. even though they have pretty okay drafts that could work, some decent ideas they weren't really on the same page when it comes to some of these initiations, some of these team fights. They're trying